Hi, everyone. It's Lydia with the Global Travel Junkie podcast and YouTube channel. And today our episode is literally out of this world. I'm so excited to be sitting here with Carl. Hi, Carl. Hey, Lydia. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I can't wait to tell the audience what we're going to talk about today. And you are, you guys are not going to believe this conversation because I am barely believing that I'm having this conversation. So where are you today, Carl? Where are we talking to you from? I'm in Toronto, Canada, um, but I represent Signature Travel Network. So I'm the vice president of exploration for Signature Travel Network. And we are a network of 15,000 travel advisors. And what we're going to talk about today, and you'll see it on Lydia's background and on, <clears throat> excuse me, my background, is a company that has partnered exclusively with us called Space Perspective, and they are all about space exploration and bringing it to the public. Yeah, that's exciting. And so I have a special little treat. I don't know, Carl. We just got to know each other a little bit before we started recording this episode, but I brought a special show and tell for you guys in the audience and actually for Carl too. So watch out. Look what I have here. Y'all know that do you know that the Apollo 7 mission was the first manned spacecraft um, venture for the Apollo series? And this right here, let me get it in camera, is a, ast a real astronaut's helmet. Okay, I'm going to show y'all. This is wow. Walt Cunningham's hat, hard hat. I'm going to show y'all look what it looks like. It's his hard hat from walking around NASA. It has his name printed on it. And before he passed away, I emailed him. He lived in Houston where I live. I live near NASA. Um, this is a virtual background. But if y'all can see, he signed the inside of this hat in the 80s for my father. And this is a real blue astronaut Apollo 7 helmet. And, That's and fantastic. A, isn't that cool? And it's available for anyone for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't Actually, know you were a space nerd when we decided we were going to do this. That's I wonderful. know. Like, but wait, I've got to tell you the most amazing thing. I started researching that hat um, after my father passed away and it came into our family. And I researched it and you are not going to believe. I mean, here I am, the one holding this hat. And... The Apollo 7 launch was, again, the first successful manned spacecraft. There were three, you know, Walter, another Walt, and then um, I forgot the other guy's name. I just asked Alexa this morning. But they, they launched on October 11th, 1968. The day that I was born, no. the day he was going out of this world, I was coming into this world. <laughs> it was just the most amazing like connection for me. And so I just wanted to share that because I think it's a neat, like sometimes the world brings you people, the, the universe brings you people and connections. And what we're going to talk about today with Space Perspective is that they're still needing to launch their first manned spacecraft. And so um, it's just kind of exciting to have this conversation with Carl today. So we're going to start the podcast by asking Carl, I'm going to ask him to introduce himself and like how he's connected. And then we're going to dig a deeper into what is space tourism and how can we be a part of it? <laughs> Well, as I said, yeah, my name is, is Carl Kanstetter, and I'm the VP of Exploration for Signature Travel Network, a network of 15,000 travel advisors, all based in the U.S. And we have a special relationship with Space Perspective as we are the only uh, consortium or network of travel advisors that they have chosen to work with uh, as a preferred partner. So it's our pleasure to try and help Space Perspective get the word out certainly to our members are the 15,000 travel advisors in our network and educating them and helping them understand what the product is so that they in turn can tell their clients. And, you know, your story about connection, it's really interesting that you mentioned that because 
when I met my wife, one of the first things she told me was that she's a bit of a space nerd. She <laughs> uh, was in space camp for a while, uh, went to Florida to see a couple of shuttle launches, all of which fascinates me. And, and I haven't done any of that yet. But then uh, we have an 11 year old son and the eclipse that went through North America in early April on the 8th of April, we took a chance and we took the train from Toronto to Montreal, spent a night in Montreal, rented a car, drove to the eastern townships about an hour and a half, two hours east and south of Montreal, right into the path of totality, found a little ski resort that wasn't doing anything else. Um, they charged 20 bucks to take the lift up to go to the top. And we had perfect perfect, perfect conditions. I know there were people that traveled all over North America and, and you know, probably at great expense, both time and, and uh, financially, and unfortunately didn't have optimal conditions. We knew it was a crapshoot, but we got very, very lucky. And so now the three of us are, are fully vested again into this whole notion of, um, you know, space travel, but also just astronomy and, and um astronomical phenomenon, those sorts of things. We're thinking about where the next eclipse is or where we should go in order to see the next one. We're thinking Egypt in 2027. Uh, and then when I started with Signature 14 months ago, and I very quickly realized that one of the preferred partners was Space Perspective, and they're one of the first phone calls I made. I wanted to reach out to the, the business development managers there and find out what is this product? What is this incredible opportunity that you're offering to people that want to explore space, civilians that want to explore space? Regular and are, people. Regular people. <laughs> and how are you doing it differently than some of the others? And that's what became evident right away is, is Space Perspective is unique in what what is currently being offered. Yeah, that's wonderful. So let's dive into some just general, I mean, I'm going to ask the most general questions that are out there. So, I mean, literally has, are, are, is there anybody who's taking you and me to space right now? Is there anybody doing this? Well, there are some companies that are doing it and you hear about it periodically when a celebrity goes up, you know, uh, William Shatner went with one of the companies offering it. But those companies that operate now, there's a lot of training involved. There's a great commitment of time and resources because you do have to go through a version of astronaut training because <laughs> it's the traditional way of, of breaking through Earth's atmosphere and, and getting uh, in, into space in that it's it's a rocket. And so the training that goes along with that and the training of what it will be like to be weightless. So, and, and also at significant expense. So a lot of commitment in terms of time and resources and what have you, and physical fitness. What's unique about what Space Perspective are doing is they're using old technology, technology that's been around for a very, very long time with a very contemporary, very modern spin on it, uh, using a hydrogen balloon to slowly lift you into space over the course of two hours. So from the time you launch, uh, initially it'll be from the Space Coast in Florida, launching from there, slowly wafting up at, I believe it's 12 miles an hour, uh, two <laughs> hours. So I Let's know. Part of the journey, slowly, slowly wafting up to get to 100,000 feet, so about three times as high as commercial aircraft fly. From there, you can see the curvature of the Earth, and they don't spend minutes there. They spend two hours at that altitude, so where you can see the curvature of the Earth, and have a cocktail, and have a drink, and record a message to your family or to future generations of your family. And, and take a few selfies. Take a couple of selfies, of <laughs> course, and, and experience the moment. Be in the moment and realize where you are and the unique perspective that you have on the world. And, you know, almost every astronaut, every interviewed who comes back from having had that experience of seeing Earth from that unique perspective talks about the fragility of Earth and how beautiful the planet looks from that perspective. And they all seem to take on this idea of we really need to do what we can to preserve life on, on Earth and what can we do in terms of preservation and conservation and things like that. So it, it truly moves people and changes many people who have that perspective. So again, space perspective is unique in the sense that it's not a rocket. 
uh, it's it's this old technology that is still used by NASA. Uh, not everything that NASA and, and others take into space is, um, do they use a rocket to get that, that material, that uh, weather balloon, or, or excuse me, that, that weather satellite, it doesn't always go up by rocket, it's expensive. So if they don't have to go quite that high and clear Earth's atmosphere and get into orbit, they will use balloons and, and they have been using them, you know, for 50 or 60 years. So this is just expanding and, and um, bettering that ta technology and making it safe for, for human travel. And what we were talking about, um, that feeling of just the slow lift, it's almost like just imagine like an analogy would be like being in a hot air balloon that just in it, but inside of an enclosed capsule that just keeps going and doesn't stop until you get to 100,000 feet. And then, like you said, you stay there for two hours. There's food and cocktails, but also that alternative option that's out there is like only a few minutes. You know, it's an explosion of a rocket that's going out to space. You hang out for a minute or two, right? I mean, you can just go watch it on video, like what that experience is, and then you come back down. So that's a that's a big bang for not a lot of buck, right? <laughs> not a lot of meat in there. No, I don't, I, no pun intended, you know. Right. But, um, yeah. And, and again, that's the the biggest intention behind space perspective is to make it more readily available to more people uh, because those those existing technologies the the you know taking all of that training and getting into a traditional rocket it's the playground of the very very few so they're they're hoping to democratize this a little bit more and make it available to even more people in, and in other parts of the world as well. And the last thing I just wanted to say on that, we talked about going up for two hours and spending two hours there. We didn't talk about coming down. Um, <laughs> that's important, right? That's important. We got things yeah. to do. We got people to see. Well, and we don't want to stay up there indefinitely. So uh, gentle 12 mile an hour, uh, like being in a hot air balloon, that's ex that's the exact analogy, spending two hours there to really take the time to appreciate where you are and be in the moment, be in this experience, and then gently wafting down two hours again. So a total experience of six hours. You know, let's talk about this. How many people out there are wondering about the safety factor? So you and I were talking because I had a few questions of my own before we got started just to see how this was going to play out. And so I was impressed with what you said about to me about the, all the safety features. So tell me a little bit about for those who are kind of curious, like a balloon in space, like what are all the things they're doing to make sure that it's safe? So the first thing I think to understand is that space perspective are not doing this in a vacuum. They're not doing this alone. They have partnered with and, and seek the guidance and counsel of the FAA, NASA, uh, the Coast Guard, and some of the contractors that NASA uses for some of the equipment that they have, whether that's telemetry equipment or things like that. So they've partnered with the top federal agencies and the top private corporations in the world to make sure, again, that they're not operating in a vacuum. They want to make sure that they're being pushed and, and ask the difficult questions about safety and security. So specifically on that, um, you know, the capsule that they've designed, for example, one of the first questions was, given that the landings are in water, the ocean, so you'll take off, in this case, when, when they first start out, you'll take off from land, uh, the, the Space Coast in Florida, uh, rise for two hours, have that two-hour experience, and slowly descend for two hours into the ocean, where there's a chase boat uh, that's coming after you and is able to lift the capsule out of the water, etc., how do we ensure that the capsule sits in the water in such a way that it doesn't tip over and make everybody uncomfortable? Or some people will be, you know, feeling like they're laying down and looking up at other people who are strapped in and looking down at them and wondering if they're going to fall on them. They need to make sure that the capsule sits upright in the water when it lands. And so there was a great deal of engineering and design and technology that went into coming up with the right design 
of the capsule so that it will function that way. So that's just one example. Uh, you know, redundancies in terms of uh, the piloting and the navigation uh, of the of the capsule itself. So there is a pilot, of course, a highly skilled, highly trained pilot. But if something were to go awry, uh, the captain becomes ill or something like that, they shouldn't. Uh, it's only six hours, but you never know. Mission control has complete control. They can take over controls at any time. But so the question may be asked, well, why, why send a, a pilot up at all? Everyone's going to feel more comfortable <laughs> with a pilot. You know, even when we get fully autonomous cars, uh, are, are people going to be comfortable with a fully autonomous taxi without a taxi driver in there or an Uber driver? So, uh, you know, I think the pilot obviously is a, is a good idea, but mission can call, control, excuse me, can take over if they need to every aspect of, of the uh, flight. Yeah, that's wonderful. What is driving the interest in space tourism right now? I think it's, you know, pardon the pun or, or the reference to pop culture, but it's the final frontier. You know, it's <laughs> uh, opening that up to the public. Expedition cruising, and, and that's some of my background, is experiencing a, a huge um, explosion in popularity now. And, you know, we liken it to where river cruising was 20 years ago. River cruising was not new 20 years ago. There had been small uh, ships, small boats on the rivers in Europe for a long time, you know, all through the, the 20th century or large part of it. But it was after ocean cruising was sort of introduced. And we all remember watching the love boat as kids. And that introduced the idea of, of cruising to people and <laughs> cruising became very, very popular. And then cruisers or the general public were looking for something new, something different and river cruising, which had been around already, but really got pushed to the fore. Um, oh, that's interesting. So people who were traditionally motion sickness or said uh, motion sick, um, I'm never going to take a cruise because I'm, I'm very susceptible to uh, movement on the water and, and susceptible to motion sickness. River cruising solves that problem. People that want to see the interior, the heartland of some of these countries in Europe, river cruising, cruising solved that problem. So here was a product that had existed, but now was marketing it differently and perhaps updating and upgrading the hardware and making it more appealing to people. I think that's what's happening now as well with space tourism. Uh, people are moving away from, you know, the luxury I think was defined by owning things um, and plating everything you owned in gold. You know, I think about uh, a popular image from probably 20 years ago of the interior of uh, one of Donald Trump's homes and it was everything was gold and that was what was considered opulent and that was luxury and luxury now is experiences collecting right. experiences um, and, and having time with family you know one of the things that space perspective anticipates is that entire families will buy out a capsule of eight or a group of friends will buy out a capsule of eight people and do it together as an experience. Um, there is an, um, there's a product now out there where there's a, a celebrity chef that's going up and the celebrity chef will prepare a meal in space for a group of people. So again, it's always coming up with these new and, and unique and interesting experiences. So I, I think that's what's driving it. Yeah, that's awesome. So we talked about the logistics of like getting up there and hanging out for two hours and coming down. Let's talk about when you're in the capsule and you're going up. I know there's a beautiful environment inside there and there's some amenities, right? So let's talk about like, what's it like to get in the capsule and go up there? Like, what are you going to experience once you're sitting there for four hours or six hours? Right. Well, you know, again, unlike the space program and some of those images we have in our heads of, of three astronauts crammed into this cramped little space and bent over in an, an uncomfortable position, and, and even some of the space exploration products that exist now, it's somewhat similar because you're limited in terms of the size of the capsule. So everybody's sitting shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, elbow jammed into a tiny, tiny little space. The capsule is very, very spacious. Um, the seats 
look like uh, you know a recliner. They're very, very comfortable. They've been designed to sort of recline and I, I think allow people to get as much of a beautiful view as much of the time as possible. And then upon reaching altitude, you can get up and walk around. You're not in weightlessness. You still have gravity, so you're not strapped in for six hours. You can get up and walk around and take that cocktail that the host or hostess has prepared for you and walk around and, and film a video to your future self or to future generations of your family, um, you know, with the backdrop of the curvature of the earth and, and you're, you've got a martini in your hand, uh, doing that sort of thing. So, yeah, you guests will be able to get up and move around and enjoy a cocktail. There is a bathroom on board uh, because six hours might be too long to go without access. So there's a bathroom on board as well. There's a host uh, or hostess and the pilot. So it's meant to be very, very comfortable. And, uh, you know, in terms of access and people who may be able to do this, again, there's no training involved like there would be with the products that are available now. Uh, and going through that a form of, of astronaut training, if you can board a commercial aircraft, if you can take a cruise, you can do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I know that there will be a health questionnaire that you'll have to fill out and perhaps even have it signed off by your doctor. But if you're well enough to travel commercially uh, in a commercial aircraft or sail on a cruise ship, you're well enough to do this. That's great. That's great. Now, I'm sure people are excited and they want to learn more. Where would they go to find more information and possibly get on some kind of an email list so that they can be notified when you start booking that? Or do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and just in terms of the, the window, so we're talking in, in uh, you know, the second quarter of 2024, the first test flights are meant to happen this year, and they hope that the first commercial flights will happen by the end of 2024. In terms of finding out more and keeping uh, being kept uh, um, in the know, you can go to SignatureTravelNetwork.com, find a travel advisor that works within our network. And again, we are, um, our space perspective is a preferred, part, prefer, preferred partner of our network. Um, so reach out to a travel advisor within our network and they will make sure that you have that information. Alternatively, go to Space Perspective's website and learn more there. Uh, but I think, you know, working with an advisor and today is uh, Travel Advisor Day, National Travel Advisor Day. Wow. Yeah. So it's always a good idea because they will make sure that you've got the best information, the right information, put you in touch with the right people. If you've got more questions, they will be able to track down the answers for you and, and get the uh, get that information to you. So I think that's that's probably the best way to go about doing it. Well, and I heard on another video that y'all had already booked over 1700 spots that had already been taken. So we were talking about where you can't even get on a spacecraft once they start until what year was it that you said they're already booking into? I think they're booking into 2029. And, you know, there's, there isn't an exact science in terms of the dates because a launch is going to be very, very dependent on weather, as you can imagine. But, you know, if they schedule one a week, let's say if Space Perspective have it in their plans to do one a week and they can take eight people at a time and there are 1,700 people that have yeah, uh, put down doing deposits math. so far, do the math. Yeah. Now, one way to get around that and, and coming back to, to Signature Travel Network, we have some agencies that have pre-purchased a capsule, uh, you know, a, a launch and they've purchased or put deposits yeah. down on, on You want to be the seats. first, right? Right. Right. Now, they may have already sold some of them, but one agency I know is holding one capsule. Another agency is holding two capsules. And because they put the deposits down some time ago, I, I want to say even more than a year ago, they are going to be among the first to launch, not in 2029, more likely in 25. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if you called up now and you were new to it and, and you were just booking a space on the next available, it may well be 2029. Okay. Now, I don't know the answer to this question, but are y'all the exclusive partner, the only way you can book travel with the space perspective? No, you're, we're not. You could certainly book directly. But again, I, I think working with a travel advisor 
in the Signature Travel Network, they will help put the whole package together because it's going to involve getting to Florida. Getting there, yeah. yeah getting up to the Space Coast, accommodations, then the, the launch itself. The retrieval is uh, at sea. So once the capsule lands, they retrieve it, bring the <laughs> capsule need someone back to pick onto you the ship. Up? Yeah, it's not just, it's when it's over, it's not a matter of opening the capsule door and whistling for an Uber and jumping in the Uber and going to the airport. It's going to take a little bit longer than that. So there, you know, you want to bookend this thing and make sure that it's done properly and build in some time. And coming back to what I was saying about launch windows and, and them being highly weather dependent, you also are going to have to have some flexibility where your accommodations pre and post are concerned and where your flights are concerned. So, again, could you go to space perspective and book independently? Absolutely. But then you're responsible for your Keeping flights, for the it. transfers, for your accommodation. When you work with an advisor, they will put that whole, they'll bundle that entire package together and they will help and make sure that all of those pieces fall together, especially when things don't go according to plan. Yeah, it's like having a concierge to take care of you. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. in this in this regard, I think that's an important piece of everything. Is there anything that we haven't touched on about this whole experience that you feel like needs to be said or mentioned in order for this to feel like a complete overview of uh, this perspective? Sure. There's, there's a few things that I'd like to mention. One, Space Perspective is an American company. The oh. capsule is being designed and built uh, in the U.S., in Florida, at the, on the Space Coast. All of the technology, the balloon, all the safety, the, the backup features, the backup, the parachutes and the backup parachutes, you know, all of that. That's all being engineered and designed and constructed in the U.S., which I think is phenomenal. Yay. Now, thinking a little more globally, one of the things that Space Perspective are thinking about long term is that they will launch and retrieve from sea or they will have the ability to do that. Um, and they intend to build a couple of these vessels. The one is already built, the retrieval vessel that will be used in Florida, but then place one in, uh, you know, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, that area. Everyone's going to Dubai and, and sort of the playground of that part of the world. And they would have a ship off the coast there and, and conduct operations there. They may have another one, say, you know, off the coast of, of Rio or Buenos Aires or Sao Paulo for the Latin American market. Um, again, in Asia, maybe off the coast of Shanghai or Tokyo for the Asian market. Because it is only eight people at a time and it's highly weather dependent. So looking at different weather windows in different parts of the world, hey, I'm going to be in Asia at that time of the world. I can't do it because it's hurricane season in Florida. So maybe when I'm on a business trip in Asia, I'll sign up. And you know, I think having more centers around the world and launch points around the world is a very clever approach. I also think that's an even bigger play on why you would want a travel agent to work with, because when the time comes and you want to pick a spot, maybe they don't have any available in Florida, but the new, you know, airport launch place is Shanghai. You can get there faster and get on that one sooner. You know, right. they'll know the travel yeah. network will know. Right. Yeah. And, and the other reason behind this, and I think it's fascinating is you know, if somebody has this, this experience and gets absolutely hooked on it and love it, okay, I did the experience and I saw the curvature of the earth and I saw the Florida Peninsula. Fantastic. Now I want to do it in Europe so that I can see the coastline of France and I can look over and see the UK and I can see the British Isles or I want to do it off of uh, Cape Town and see the, the southernmost point of Africa and see it from all these different perspectives. So I, I thought, I think again, it's, it's very clever what Space Perspective has in mind in terms of these launch points globally, because it doesn't have to be one and done. If, if you love this experience and you wanna have it again, it doesn't always just have to be off the Florida coast. Yeah, this is so fun. Thank you so much for being here and having this fun conversation with me. And I want to invite you back. So 
as things develop and things start to happen, this can be your channel for getting on and spreading the word about what's new with Space Perspective and what is Signature Travel doing to get the, their clients on board and have this experience. And then after your first a few or some of your clients go and they want to come back and tell their adventure story so the rest of the world can have an experience of what it's like to go up in space. I welcome you back for that. So that would be great if you'd like to do all those things. I would love to. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, hearing from me is one thing because I'm gleaning what I can and learning what I can from space perspective. Hearing from somebody who actually has the experience is going to be who we really want to speak to and tell us about every aspect of this. What was this gentle 12 mile an hour rise like? What was it like being seeing the curvature? What was your experience like? Who did you record a video to? Who did you speak to from there? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's what that's did you see in the stars? I mean, you're going to be up in the stars. There's probably like meteors going Absolutely. and, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah. Who knows? The sky's the limit on Truly. what you could see. So anyway, I really appreciate you being here today. And for those of you who might be finding this channel for the first time, we're a fairly new channel. We do lots of different luxury travel destination experiences. So please subscribe and be a part of the exploration and the journey of seeing our beautiful world and reach over to the Signature Travel Network and see what other destinations they can put you in and have experiences with. Do you, is there anything else you want to tell us about? Like, is there something else you specialize in that they can go to your website and find out about that's uh, related? Everything. Uh, you know, any aspect of travel, uh, domestic or international, um, whether it's flights or a cruise or uh, a journey into space. Yes, I love it. Thank you so much for your time today. And I hope to see you again soon. You will. Thank you very much, Lydia. I, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye.